Good morning. My name is Mark Carter, IPC Director of Technology Transfer. I'm here today to talk to you about IPC standards categories and the numbering system to help you when you're searching for information in the IPC standards. While it's not always obvious, and some topics don't neatly fit as nicely in one category or another as we might like, there is, surprisingly, some rhyme and reason to our standards numbering system. A good place to start for information on IPC standards is on our website. Under the Knowledge tab, you'll find a standards tree that gives a visual representation of the IPC standards categorized by general topic. While this tree is good for overall review of documents by category, what it doesn't give you is the content of each individual standard. So if you have a question about embedded, for example, without knowing the major categories of the numbering system, you'd have to pull up each of those documents descriptions from our online bookstore. If you have a question on embedded or printed electronics, which have a limited number of standards at present, your search wouldn't be too involved. But let's say you were looking for something in standards related to assembly support. You may spend quite some time pulling each document up and scanning the description. So it's good to know how the first and second numbers, at least, of our current four-digit numbering system are assigned. Then the second good reference document you should know about is shown in this extract from the Technical Advisory Executive Committee, which shows how the first and second numbers of our current numbering system are assigned. An excerpt can be found at www.ipc.org slash spec dash list. By referencing this document, if you were looking for something that spelled out the requirements for, say, materials, which would be the first digit four, that might be used to make flexible printed circuit boards. That would result in the first and second digits of 42. So you'd start by looking at documents numbered IPC 42XX. Once you've gotten this far, you have several ways that you might narrow the search down even further. One good way, again, begins on our website. Go to the Knowledge tab, and under Standards, you'll find the Document Revision table. Click on that and scroll down to the number series you think should address your issue. By reviewing the document names, you can get a pretty good idea of which document is the one that is most likely to contain the information you're after. Let's stick with the flexible printed circuit material example we were just discussing. You'd scroll down until you see simple. I should say that some of the older standards that haven't seen a major update recently will still be in an older three-digit system. And some of the joint standards, like those that we've worked on with, in cooperation with multiple standards organizations, as well as some of the older white paper technical discussions, don't fit in this system very well. But again, through the color coding on the spec tree, you can always identify which of IPC's technical staff you should go to for help. In addition, members can always get answers to their technical questions by sending an email to answers at ipc.org. I hope this brief explanation was helpful to you in understanding how to find information in the IPC standards. In subsequent videos, IPC tech staff will share more detail on each of the major categories of our four-digit system as well as the content of the standards in each. Thanks very much. Have a good day.